Oh, man. That just fires me up. And what I love about, uh, you know, you hear a story like that. Those, a lot of you guys know Sarah. You know Rob. And, and so then when you hear about what their past was like, you're like, no way. There's no way. And that's exactly what we should be saying. That's what Jesus does. It's like, there's, there's no way. How do you, I know you now. Like, like I don't see any of the, uh, you, you know, it's kind of like when uh, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were thrown in that fire, you know, and then they come out, you know, and, and the king's like, no way. You, you don't even smell like smoke, they say. And that's what I feel about Rob and Sarah. That you can't even smell the old aroma. You know, you, you, you don't even, it's like, I don't even smell the smoke. I don't even see the, 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 the leftovers from that lifestyle. Like you really are a new creation. Like the Bible says, it's, it's like, I, I can't even believe. Yeah. And I love what she said at the end. Like maybe you didn't have that type of lifestyle, uh, that doesn't mean you don't need a savior. I mean, I, I see the wickedness in my own life. And you know what? I, I've, never, I've never even smoked pot. I know, it's embarrassing. Um, I, 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 I've got drunk like one and a half times, maybe, you know? Like, it was my accident. It was, <laughs> one was at a pastor's conference. And... And they were drinking wine. I'm like, all right. And then I'm like, wow, Rachel was with me. And I'm like, honey, you got to hold me up. I, I can't. Uh. And yet, even though my life, my past doesn't look like that, man, I know what's going on in this mind. There's secrets in my life that I don't feel like just standing up here and telling all of you. Um, I desperately needed a savior. And I can stand up here saying, you know what? There's no shame left. He washed it all away. I'm white as snow. I'm the righteousness of Jesus. Um, my life is insanely good. I can't even believe it. And that's what he does. That's why we're here. We're not here to listen anymore. We're here to celebrate him and what he's done in our lives. Man, I just love, I love, I love this church. I love hearing these testimonies of what Jesus has done. I love that... No one wants to take glory. It's like we want him to get all the glory because we know what he saved us from. So I, I don't know if you guys did the reading this morning, um, but there was a verse or a couple of verses that I really love that I just want to point out and make our theme today because it just hit me this morning. It was in 1 Corinthians, which I love the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, listen to what he says. Chapter 3, verse 3. While there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? <laughs> That's such a great phrase. He goes, what are you doing? You guys are acting like humans. This is what humans do. That's not what we do. Okay, they go, oh, I love this guy, Paul. I love this guy, Paul. I like them more. I like. He goes, that's human talk. He goes, when you start doing that and compare this speaker to that speaker, this band to that band, you know, and, and there's these divisions among you, you're acting like the rest of the world. You're acting like mere humans. And God says, that's not what we do. You understand, as a church, he says, I want you to be holy because you're not just humans. Man, I hear that phrase. Sometimes some of you in the church, you may have said this. What do you expect from me? I'm just a man. I'm just a woman. I'm human. No, you're not just a man. You're not just a woman. You're not just a human. He goes on to explain you're a temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Okay, so we don't do things like the rest of the world does it. We're different from them. We're supposed to be a light to the world. And so if there's divisions among us, which are, it always amazes me that in the book of 1 Corinthians, remember what the Corinthian church was like. You had so much immorality. They were getting drunk during communion. Okay, and Paul has to confront that. They are suing each other. 
Couples are divorcing from one another. Men were sleeping with their stepmoms. I mean, it was just an immorality. He says, that's not even in the world. I mean, it's all this craziness. They're fighting. Everyone's trying to speak in tongues and be louder than the other guy. They weren't even believing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ anymore. Sink it through the book of all the things that he addresses. And yet with all the things that are going on that are so disgusting, the first thing he says is, I hear there's divisions among you. I hear some of you guys are fighting. And you, you, you like this guy's opinion more. This guy, because you guys are acting like humans. It's, it's just crazy to me that with all this stuff, I mean, there were people that were saying, oh, I heard a word from the Lord. Jesus is cursed. I mean, just ridiculous things going on. And Paul's saying, that, that doesn't, but with all of that, the first thing he addresses is, hey, but I hear there's division. Division in the body of Christ. I bring this up because I just, I want to make sure we're different from the world. Right now, everyone's so volatile, right? Everyone's just mad. And everyone wants you to take sides on different issues. You know, whether it's politics, sexuality, you know, race. Like, we're just trying, the world is just so, like, ready to fight about anything. Don't say anything about this person or this person. You know, and... What God wants is, my church is different. They won't divide. They're not going to divide. They're not going to act like humans. No, not here. Not here. And there were some verses that we read this week in, uh, if you're doing the readings, which I hope you are, um, because that's what sets us apart. We don't wake up and just think about ourselves. We wake up and recognize, I actually woke up. That means someone's giving me another day of life. Man, in, in fact, uh, this, I'm, I'm all over the place today. It's God taught me so much. And uh, but last last weekend I was in Brazil. Any Brazilians here? No. Oh, you got one. Obrigado. Uh, but I, I'm in Brazil at a churrascaria. Mm, amen. And uh, so they come around with all the meat and everything. But I, I was speaking at this conference too. Um, but. Uh, which is the main reason I went. And, uh, but I just felt led by the Lord, like, because they gave me this topic on one of my talks on uh, making sure God gets all the glory. And we just started, I uh, just felt like God wanted me to read uh, Revelation 4, describing that scene in heaven and then those angels that day and night never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is a Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And I really believe that God didn't want me to preach anymore. Uh, that he just wanted us to spend the next half of my talk, the next 25 minutes, saying, holy, holy, holy is a Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come in Portuguese. And... I said, does that disappoint you that I fly all the way from America and what we're going to do for the next 25 minutes is we're just going to join that chorus of the angels and just say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And so yet thousands of people in Portuguese, santo, 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 al Señor Dios todo poderoso. You know, just, I'm saying it wrong, but you know, just, it's getting louder. We're screaming. We're jumping up and down. We're running all over the place, just screaming those words, you know, because I'm saying these angels, man, they were made for that. That's what God made them. God wanted them to do that day and night, you know, like he, he made them. And, and, and some of us hear that. What day and night? So they're doing it right now. And they're doing it last night when I went to bed. Honestly, some of us hear that and we go, gosh, that seems a little monotonous. That seems boring. I don't know if I could do that. You know, because we don't even like to sing the same worship songs two weeks in a row. Right? 
turn. And some of us, well, I didn't really like all the songs. I like two of the songs and this, this, this. And man, I, and, and you hear phrases like, I didn't really like worship today. And it hit me. That is one of the stupidest sentences you could ever say. I, I didn't really like the worship. Think about that. Did it ever occur to you that we weren't worshiping you? Like, did it ever occur to you that we don't really care? Did it, in your own mind, did you think, man, what is worship? And that God, isn't he the one we're trying to please? And I'll tell him, you know, in conferences, we, we need this band and then this band. We have about four or five different bands. Why? Because of you, not because of him. He made these angels to say this over and over and over. And he likes it. We know he likes it. So I said, let's do it. And it, the place, we were just going nuts. I mean, we went beyond our time. We just didn't even want to stop. And I just encouraged them. I said, hey, what if we roll out of bed every morning and join them? What if those are the first words out of our lips? You know, it's just to wake up and go, oh, yeah, it's not about me. Let me join in that chorus and stare at that throne and just say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Because that's what I use my lips for, is to lift up his name and not my own. And, and so it's just been cool getting these emails from people and Brazil just saying, yeah, I, I do that every morning now. You know, we get together and we, that's just what we say. Um, it's just so cool. But I was um, in our reading this week. I mean, all that I didn't mean to bring up, but Romans 14, uh, verse 1, he says, As for the one who is weak in faith, what, welcome him. but not to quarrel over opinions. He says not to quarrel over opinions. In fact, the, the verse I really hit, Romans 12, verse 16, never be wise in your own sight. Never be wise in your own sight. Isn't that a great verse? Never be wise in your own sight. That's why he says, okay, that's, that's what the world does. Everyone's tweeting their thoughts because they're so wise. Everyone blogs because they're so wise. It's like, here, let me state my opinion. After every news article on the internet, someone, they, everyone types in their wisdom. Here's what I think. Here's what I think. Here's what I think. In, in the church, it's got to be different. We go, look, my thoughts are not his thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, that's how high his thoughts are, how much higher his thoughts are than my thoughts. So, so I'm not up here to give you opinion. As, as, as a church, we tremble at the word of God. For in Isaiah 66, verse 2, this is the one to whom I'll look. He was humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. This is how we can be different, people. As people are out there expressing their opinions and fighting and quarreling over opinions. Here's what I think is most important. Here's what I think is what he says, hey, as a church, you don't do that because you're not wise in your own eyes. We don't act like mere humans and we don't lift our thoughts up real high. We tell people, I actually don't think that anything real profound has come out of this mind. But what I do believe his thoughts are so much higher than his. Man, that's, that's great. That's your opinion. I've got my opinions. But honestly, I don't value your opinion that much. I don't value my opinion that much. But I tremble at his words. I tremble at his words. Man, we just want to be different from the world where we don't think of ourselves as brilliant in verse 19 of, of Romans 14, he says, so then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. 
So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Okay? Everyone else can fight. Everyone can fight for who's right, who's wrong. But in the church, we're different. Okay? We don't quarrel over opinions. We don't value our own opinions. We don't think we're that wise in our own eyes. We tremble at his word. And when we get together, we pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbuilding. I mean, this is the time the church has got to be so different. What if people that are just on the edge and dealing with other people that are on the edge and having to, you know, don't you feel like you're just having to walk on eggshells with every word you say? Because it's like, oh gosh, um, that white, I mean, Caucasian, I mean, Swedish, I, I, what do I call you? You know, like I, I want to, I, I, did I say the wrong thing? Like the world, like you better just get every word just right. Otherwise, you're going to have a fight. There's going to be an explosion. There's going to be an all-out war. But what if we were different? It's like where we don't get offended, you know? It's just like, yeah, you said Oriental, but I'm really Asian. Like that. I don't care. You know, what if we were different, you know? And... Yesterday, we were with this kid who spoke Korean, and my wife <laughs> looks at him and says, Konnichiwa. <laughs> like, I'm sorry for her, you know. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. She was kidding, though. It was cute. Um, what, if, what if we just did things that were just, I, that wasn't really upbuilding. Sorry, sorry, honey. Um, but it was funny. Um, let me just stick to scripture. Romans 15. Let me read Romans 15. He, he continues in the next chapter, verse 1. We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. For Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of those who approached you fell on me. For whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Isn't that great? So that's what we do when we get together. Okay? We're not looking to please ourselves. Okay? This is not about this consumer driven type of gathering where it's like, well, I come for me. He goes, no, no, no. That's not what we do. That's what humans do. That's not what Christ did. He was 100% human, but he was also 100% God. And in the same way, I'm 100% human, but I'm also 100% the righteousness of God. And I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm not just a human being. Okay? And so what I do is I act like Christ. Christ did not please himself. He sought to build us up. And when you came today, was that your mindset? Or did you come here like a human being? Or did you go, you know what? I'm going to come here like Christ. Who cares what I like? I'm not here to please myself. I'm here to build others up. I have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak, not to please myself. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up. Man, I just want that. He says, we have the mind of Christ. That's who we are. This is another, like, just one last thought I want to share today, and then I'm done. And it has nothing to do with the other thoughts. I just didn't know how to blend it. Um, but I wanted to say it because it was something God has shown me lately. Um, 
when we read the book of Mark, there was a passage that jumped out at me that, that you're probably familiar with, Mark chapter 8. It says, calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? So he he, he just says, hey, if anyone wants to follow me, Jesus, if anyone wants to follow me, he's going to have to deny himself. Okay, it can't be about you. You got to deny yourself. You're not here to please yourself anymore if you're going to follow me. He says, you're going to have to pick up your cross and follow me. That means die to yourself. Then he makes a promise. He goes, if anyone tries to save his life, I promise you, you'll lose it. That's a promise. Okay, let's admit it. Most of us want to save our lives to some degree, right? I kind of like this. I kind of like this. I kind of like this. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to lose this. Let's just be honest. There's nothing wrong with that. But he says, but if you do try to save all these things, I promise you, you'll lose it. But if you let it go, you lose it for my sake. And for the gospel's sake, you'll find it. It's it's like if, if someone handed me like a hot slice of pizza right now. The smart thing to do would be to eat it. The dumb thing is like, I want to try to save this as long as I can. Let me Ziploc it. Let me freeze it. Let me, uh, that shrink wrap thing that, um, you know, let me, uh, let me just see. I want to see how long I can save this pizza. It's like, well, that's dumb. It's going to go bad. It's meant to be eaten. Uh, And that's what he's saying here. He goes, your life is meant to be spent, okay, for the gospel. We're, we're going to die, okay? That, like, what are you going to just try to live as long as you can? Is he going to try to preserve your body, make it look like you're still 30? You know, like, what are you going to do? Let's just, let's just see how long we can preserve ourselves. Oh, that's funny. He says, no, you do that. He goes, you're going to lose your life. But he says, you know, I'm asking you to let go of your life. Just lose it. Just spend it. And you'll find it. He goes, that's a promise. Lose it for the sake of the gospel. I don't know what God's called you to. There may be some of you that God's calling you to some awesome, amazing, terrifying adventure. That's kind of what our church is about. It's like, I want all of you to be able to go anywhere on the earth and you'll be fine. Like, Because you know how to study the word for yourself. You read it every morning. You know how to make disciples. You know how to baptize. You know how to be the church. You don't need a building. You don't need an offering. You, you just gather with other believers. Like we, it, it, it's about just releasing you to do something amazing rather than protecting and saving. So last week when I was in Brazil, last story, this pastor, I'm having lunch with him. And I'm telling him, man, your church is really cool because they were doing some really unique things. He goes, yeah, it is, but he goes, I see what you guys are doing. I want to do that. He, and he said this. He goes, my, my church still feels like a zoo. And I go, well, what do you mean by that? And he goes, you ever see the movie Madagascar? Have you guys seen Madagascar? Great movie. If you haven't seen it. Rent it tonight. I mean, it's, or buy it, or it's probably on Netflix. I mean, Madagascar, it's just, it's, it'll, it'll change your, your life. Um, it's about these zoo animals, okay? These zoo animals. And, uh, and the opening scene is the zebra, and he's on a treadmill in the zoo. And he's staring at a painting of, like, a jungle. And he's just like dreaming like he's in the wild, right? And it's his 10th birthday. And, you know, so then the, the, the giraffe and the hippo and the lion all come into his cage, you know, at night, you know, when people can't see. And the New York Zoo, they, you know, they all come in and have a birthday party for him. 
And he's just like, man, my life's half over. And all I've done is I've been in the zoo my whole life. I want to I wanna experience the wild. And the lion's like, why? Man, here they bring you meat. Ah, oh, meat every day. I know when it's going to come. You know, every day everyone comes to the zoo and I roar and they cheer for me. You know, why would I leave? The giraffe's like, yeah, you know, they're just all kind of going out. Why would you want to go in the wild? But it's just something inside of him. And, uh, you know, and so when that pastor said, he goes, what we've done in the church is we've created these cages. It's like a zoo where with the only way we know how to exist is if I show up to a building and I put my kids in this cage and my youth in this cage and then I stand in this cage and someone feeds me and I kind of like it. Let's just do it over and over and over and over again. But meanwhile, I think there's something inside of us that's like, man, I want to get out. I want to get out in the world. There's more than this. Man, I know by the power of the Holy Spirit, it's in my DNA that I can do something so powerful. And then everyone starts talking, oh, no, 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 but why, why, why? It's so nice in here. It's so, you know, good in here. And, and just every week they bring us meat. And, and it's like, I don't even know if I could teach my own kids. I don't even know if I could walk with my kids. I don't know if I could counsel other people. I don't know if I could help. I don't know if I could lead someone else to Jesus. I don't know if I could be in a place and actually read the Bible for myself. Let me just go back to this cage. And as he was talking, I was like, man. And there's a part of me, you know, as a pastor for years where I go, gosh, I trained people to live in the zoo. I domesticated them to where they didn't know how to live as it. You can't, you can't go to the San Francisco Zoo right now and just throw all those animals back in the jungle. They'll all die. Because they haven't been raised to live in the wild. And so in the, the movie, Madagascar, you know, they finally, they break out, the penguins help them, and, you know, and they, they end up on the island in this wild, and the, the lion's still, you know, doing his goofy two-footed thing, and, and the zebra's just like running alongside him, like, no, you're a lion, who's a lion, who's a lion? You know, and they're just running, and suddenly all these feelings start coming back, and then, you know, he has this desire to even eat his buddy, you know, the, the zebra, because it's like, wow, all the animal in instinct and he just starts roaring and it's just like all this power like because he was back in the environment he was created to be in and I just thought man it was just such a clear picture of me last week I'm the zebra that's my job is to tell you man you can survive out there it's what you were made for you've got so much power you're not just a human being don't act like just a human being don't act like a zoo animal. God made you for more, and I think you know that. And I'm excited to release. That's what we're all about, is releasing people back into the world. Go back to your world, your workplace. Change everyone in there. You go out there. You be the light. You act different. You be the impact. That's what he made us for. Don't try to save your life. You'll lose it. Go out there, take some risks, do some crazy things. I understand the jungle is more dangerous than the zoo, but it's what we we're made for. It's what we we're created for. And if you try to keep yourself safe, you're going to lose your life. Um, man, I hope there's just story after story that we'll talk about in eternity, you know, because we'll all go our separate ways start different churches and different places and go on all sorts of adventures and then come back at the feet of God, lay our crowns down, thank him for this amazing life, thank him for his word that we trembled at. We live in crazy times, but I'm not really worried about it. You know, I think the world's going to get crazier, but that's what we were made for, is to stand up in that. So don't be afraid. Let's stick together. Let's build each other up. Let's send each other out. Let's look out for one another. But at the end of the day, we know who lives in us. We're not just human beings. We're temples of the Holy Spirit.